In the vibrant heart of Madrid, Santiago Bernabeu has long been regarded as one of the world's great temples of football. But behind the roaring stands lies a vast engineering machine operating quietly beneath the surface. The roof can open and close like gigantic steel wings. The pitch no longer grows in a fixed position. It is divided into massive sections weighing hundreds of tons, which slide underground into a hidden preservation system. The entire stadium has been wrapped in a curved metal shell, both a powerful visual icon and an extreme structural challenge within a tightly constrained urban space. Bernabeu has been reborn to operate 365 days a year, like a giant entertainment factory in the middle of the city. So how was this project built when there was virtually no space left around it? Join Mandarin Tech as we explore. Opened in 1947, Santiago Bernabeu is located right next to one of the city's main thoroughfares and has undergone dozens of renovations over more than half a century. But by the early 2000s, Bernabeu began to reach its absolute limits. The stands could no longer be expanded, the infrastructure was becoming outdated, and demand had far surpassed that of a stadium built solely for football. It was no longer able to compete with the new generation of modern, multi-purpose stadiums emerging on the outskirts of Europe and the United States. In 2011, Real Madrid made a decisive, game-changing choice. Instead of building a new stadium, the club would completely redevelop Bernabeu on its existing site. The challenge was no longer just about architecture or technology. It was about how to transform a nearly century-old structure into a future-ready super stadium, while the city around it continued to function normally day by day, hour by hour. The decision to redevelop Santiago Bernabeu on its original site immediately turned the project into an extraordinary construction challenge. There was no vacant land for expansion, no long-term shutdown window, and domestic and European match schedules still had to be maintained as planned. The entire project was divided into independent construction phases, with each phase intervening in only a specific area while the rest of the stadium continued to operate. The old roof was the first component to be dismantled, as it did not directly affect the playing surface. The demolition was carried out in small, controlled segments to maintain the stability of the load-bearing structure and to ensure the safety of spectators in the stands that remained open. Once the space above the stands was cleared, the renovation moved deeper into the stadium's load-bearing structure. The East Stand was reconfigured to add additional seating rows, increasing capacity from about 81,000 to roughly 85,000 seats without expanding the stadium's footprint. At the same time, a between the existing building and the entire new structural system above it, it is directly connected to the existing concrete cores through bearing supports and sliding joints, allowing it to absorb movement caused by wind loads and thermal expansion within a tolerance of just a few millimeters. During construction, steel segments weighing between 20 and 40 tons were installed sequentially at height, with geometric tolerances controlled to within plus three millimeters. All of this work had to be completed within extremely short windows between official matches, where even a vibration beyond the allowable threshold or a minor load imbalance could have rendered the stadium unfit for operation. To install the new roof, super heavy cranes with lifting capacities of up to 800 tons were deployed to raise and position massive steel trusses never before seen in an urban stadium. Two main trusses, each 176 meters long, were placed along the stadium's transverse axis. Instead of being lifted as single units, they were divided into smaller sections, hoisted sequentially, and precisely assembled in mid-air to control temporary loads and structural deflection. At the same time, four longitudinal steel trusses were erected from outside the stadium and gradually slid toward the center. Installation tolerances had to be kept extremely tight, since even a minor deviation could disrupt the alignment between the transverse and longitudinal trusses during roof operation. In total, more than 33,000 tons of steel were used for the new structural system, roughly equivalent to the weight of about 120 Airbus A380 aircraft. This structure was integrated with a fully retractable roof, allowing control over natural light, ventilation, and energy use. When closed, the roof turns Bernabeu into a stable enclosed venue, ready for matches and large-scale events year-round. 
If the roof allows control over the space above the stadium, then the next challenge lies directly beneath the player's feet. Hyperium is the answer for the playing surface, where the traditional limits of a football pitch are completely removed. No grass, no playing field remains. The central area of the stadium is excavated and opened up, revealing a complex engineering construction site beneath the stands. Here, construction teams begin building a new underground structural system, including heavy load concrete slabs, primary beams, guide rails, and technical spaces running along the length of the pitch. This structure does not serve match play directly. Instead, it is designed as a mechanical foundation for an entirely new system that will be installed above it. Once the underground structure was completed, the Bernabeu pitch entered the phase of installing a new playing surface system. The entire natural grass field was divided into six independent trays, each 105 meters long, 11.6 meters wide, and weighing between 1,300 and 500 tons, depending on the amount of water retained in the soil layer. At this scale and weight, each grass tray functions as a heavy mechanical structure. When the Hyperium system is activated, the grass trays are not lifted, but instead slide horizontally along a set of mechanical guide rails. From that moment on, the playing surface no longer exists as a fixed field, but as a precisely controlled sequence of movement. The trays move according to a pre-calculated order, with each one stopping in its exact position before the next begins to slide, preventing uneven load distribution on the structure below. Under standard operating conditions, the entire pitch can be fully retracted from the surface in approximately six hours. When the pitch is removed from the playing area, the grass is not simply stored and left to wait for its return. Instead, it enters a fully artificial living environment deep underground, where every growth condition is controlled like in a biological factory. Here, sunlight is replaced by a system of LED lights combined with UV radiation, providing illumination for about 16 hours a day. The lighting cycle does not switch on and off abruptly. It is programmed to simulate sunrise and sunset, gradually increasing intensity at the start of the day and slowly decreasing before shutdown. The goal is to replicate the grass's natural biological rhythm within a sealed environment. Alongside lighting, temperature, humidity and ventilation are continuously regulated, working in coordination with an automated irrigation system to maintain stable soil conditions. Soil aeration and maintenance equipment improve airflow within the root layer while also controlling surface firmness. Before the pitch returns to play, this entire area operates under strict disease control protocols. All personnel and equipment entering the space must undergo disinfection procedures to prevent pathogens from entering from the outside. Within this environment, the grass continues to grow without sunlight, independent of weather, yet fully ready for the highest level of competition. Leaving the underground level where the grass continues to grow in a controlled artificial environment, Bernabeu extends its transformation into the space above the stands, where the spectator experience is shaped by light and visuals. At the center of the stadium, a massive LED display system is installed, suspended directly from the steel roof structure as an integral part of the architecture. Each module is lifted and precisely assembled within a confined construction space, with tolerances measured in millimeters to ensure seamless images and uniform brightness. Once in operation, the screen does more than show match information. It becomes the visual focal point of the entire stadium, completing the digital experience inside the modern Bernabeu. Bernabeu does not end when the match is over. As the lights in the stands change color, the entire stadium begins to shift states, like a giant machine programmed to never stop. In football mode, the six grass trays slide smoothly back into position and lock into precisely calibrated anchors. The elevation, flatness, and surface firmness of the pitch are restored exactly to international competition standards. In just a few hours, Bernabeu returns to the condition of a world-class football stadium, as if no intervention had ever taken place beneath the surface. When the grass retracts, the central space immediately takes on a new role. The playing surface becomes a heavy load hard floor, the roof fully closes, and the acoustic and lighting systems are reconfigured to suit indoor sports or large-scale events. In performance mode, Bernabeu operates as a fully enclosed venue, capable of hosting global concerts and major productions. 
What truly sets it apart is not the number of events, but the speed and precision of each transformation. Bernabe is no longer locked into a single function. It operates as a machine that can change states continuously, repeatedly, and precisely 365 days a year. Under the lights of the World Cup, every stadium is a reflection of ambition, technology, and the spirit of its era. Since the very first match in 1930 in Uruguay, the tournament has been more than a football stage. It has also been a platform for nations to showcase their organizational capacity and construction vision. When Qatar won the right to host the 2022 World Cup, it sent shockwaves through the global construction industry. When Stadium 974 was unveiled, it drew attention not only for its bold modular design, but also for the people behind it. Thousands of migrant workers, mainly from Nepal, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, took part in building the stadium under harsh climate conditions, earning typically $1 to $2 per hour while working 10 to 12 hour shifts each day. This largely unseen, behind the scenes reality turned the project into the center of intense social debate worldwide. Amid the scorching heat of Qatar's desert, the planning phase for a perfect World Cup stadium quickly became the greatest challenge for architects and engineers. Daytime temperatures could soar beyond 50 degrees Celsius, yet once night fell, dry cold air and strong winds took over, often bringing sudden sandstorms. Long before any final drawings were approved, teams spent years surveying the terrain, studying soil conditions, wind patterns, and heat radiation to ensure the structure could survive such extreme conditions. The design concept began taking shape early on and was repeatedly refined through countless simulations and tests until a solution emerged that could guarantee safety and comfort for spectators while also reflecting Qatar's ambition for innovation, eventually becoming ready to move into the construction phase. As soon as the site work began, the greatest challenge became clear beneath the ground itself. The Ras Abu Abud area is reclaimed coastal land with loose sand, low compaction, and a high groundwater level, making it almost incapable of bearing loads naturally. Engineers were forced to level the site on a large scale, remove weak sand layers, and reinforce the ground with hundreds of reinforced concrete piles drilled 20 to 30 meters deep, creating a stable foundation for a structure covering more than 200,000 square meters under the harsh conditions of the Gulf. On this foundation, the steel framework was erected like assembling a giant machine. The main structural system uses high-strength structural steel, rising to a height of around 40 meters and enclosing the stadium space across hundreds of thousands of square meters. Columns, beams, and steel trusses were prefabricated as modules, then transported to the site for assembly and connection using thousands of load-bearing welds and high-strength bolts. Every joint had to withstand coastal winds, extreme day-night temperature expansion, and the heavy weight of the container blocks above. This steel frame became the backbone of the entire project allowing the stadium to be both structurally robust and fully aligned with its modular construction philosophy from the very foundation, while also being designed for dismantling and reuse without compromising safety or structural strength. In parallel with the erection of the steel frame, the stadium's exterior gradually took shape through the stacking of shipping containers, the defining feature that gives the structure its distinct identity. A total of 974 steel containers were directly integrated into the structure, forming an industrial fortress that wraps around the stadium. Throughout construction, the containers were installed in sync with the steel framework, stage by stage, rather than being added after the main structure was completed. Each container was precisely positioned, serving not only as a secondary structural element, but also as functional space for stairways, technical rooms, service areas, and access routes to the stands. The number 974 was no coincidence. It is Qatar's international dialing code, intentionally encoded into the design as a national signature. Stacked in multiple layers at varying heights, the containers give the stadium's exterior the appearance of a modern industrial stronghold. Steel boxes that once crossed oceans were reborn as architecture, turning the construction process itself into a rare display of engineering ingenuity in the history of the World Cup. Today, Santiago Bernabeu is no longer just a stadium, 
It is proof of how technology can redefine urban space and the modern sports experience. From the retractable roof and the movable pitch to the hidden systems operating beneath the surface, every detail serves a single goal, transforming a historic venue into an entertainment machine of the future. Bernabeu shows that the true limit of architecture is not age, but the vision and engineering behind it. If you enjoy stories about technology, engineering, and extraordinary structures like this, don't forget to like the video and follow Mandarin Tech for more incredible discoveries.